I like to even them out so the edges are really soft. So here's an example. Like this is a crayon. I just peeled the paper off. I haven't actually done anything with it. So you guys will see if I do this, the stroke is not really that even. So oftentimes what I do is just on a scrap sheet of paper, I'll just make a bunch of lines like this and that just smooths it out a little bit. So that way you get something like here, let me show you something that's a little bit softer like this. Okay. So you guys will see what's really cool about the charcoal paper is it is very textured. I know some people don't like that because they feel that it looks a little bit too rough. I happen to love it because I think texture is beautiful. So I would just say embrace that part of the process. It can be really, really fun. Okay, let's warm up. I'm gonna start with a five minute pose because the thought of doing a two minute drawing on this paper is making me a little bit sad, but whatever, I need to get into it. And I do wanna get far enough today that we really nail some of those bony landmarks. Nathan is saying, what is charcoal paper exactly? Is it rough or smooth? It's not super rough. It's not like the super rough watercolor paper or anything like that, but it definitely has a texture. It will be very visible after a little while and you'll see that it is more textured than say newsprint is. But one of the reasons people use it for charcoal paper, um, for charcoal drawing rather, is because it really grips the powder of the charcoal. It's almost like it's got a tooth or a grit to it, which is really nice. So I really enjoy that part of the process. Okay, so the way I'm gonna do this, I'm going to probably do two five minute drawings all at once, and then I'll stop and I'll take a break and take a look at the questions in the chat. But Kira Held, who is our prof staff, she is available in the chat. So if you guys have any questions, just let her know. But I will be taking breaks here and there to look at the comments and answer questions. And as always, you guys, make my art teacher soul proud and tell me what you're learning, what you're noticing, what is helping you in this process. Okay, you guys ready to go? All right, let's do five minutes. Oh, let me pull up my image first. Okay, let's go. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna start here. All right, I'm gonna go with a full figure. Even though we're gonna focus on the front later on, I still need to do the whole thing first. So let's just get going. People have been asking me on the YouTube channel about whether I feel there is a fixed way to draw the figure. I wouldn't say there's a fixed way. I'd say there's a way that I like to do it. But you know what, you guys, if it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. That's okay. I think it's good to learn anatomy from a lot of different people because not everybody's method works for everybody. So don't worry if this technique doesn't work out great for you. This is just one way to do it. I mean, what I've learned is really this strange hybrid <laughs> technique from all these different teachers. Okay, so here, I've only been working on it for about 30 seconds, but I have the whole thing down. And I know you guys can't see anything. And you know something? I can't see anything. I can barely see it. And there's a reason for that. It's so that way I can approximate and feel the surface of the paper and just make that physical contact, okay? So now I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna do another pass. I'm going to try to get in the center line and his center line is like really, whoa, it's like mega curvy, okay? And I'm gonna get the tilt of the rib cage. Let's get in the tilt of the pelvis. Ooh, this guy has a really nice inguinal ligament. It's right here, by the way. We have not gone over that yet. I will tell you, I'm just admiring the inguinal ligament. Sometimes it's not that easy to see. I'll explain it later. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> All right. Okay, I am not focusing. Sorry about that. I've had such a crazy day. This is one of those days where you're just doing 18 different things that are not related at all. And it just makes you feel very discombobulated. Some days I have days where things are sort of related. Today it was just like, go do a video shoot, give a lecture, go for a walk. <laughs> it's just like none of it was related. Okay. All right. I am not awake. Oh, okay. Wake up. Do this. At the very least, even if this looks like total crap, I got to put some energy into this. I, I don't have energy 
from this right now. And I am going to go darker because I know that it, it is hard for you guys to see this. At the very, oh, no, 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 too dark, too dark. Let's stay lighter, lighter and looser. His face is really weird looking. This is totally like a distortion thing that's going on in the photo. At the very least, I want to get in that center line and maybe his pectoralis major up here. Honestly, guys, I think if you do a good torso, the rest of it doesn't matter because it's true. Like if you get a really solid torso and the rib cage makes sense, you can have really crappy legs and like nobody cares. They really don't. So if there's anything you want to prioritize getting really good at, I would say it should be the torso and the rib cage. Okay, this feels very blobby, but I'm not worried about it because right now I just really am trying to move. I just, ugh, not, not feeling it right now. I tell myself that the first 30 minutes of drawing, it's a throwaway. This is not about drawing. This is about me warming up. This is about me feeling out the process. So I think if you treat it more like that, it's easier to not torture yourself because yes, stuff I do frustrates me, but I can't let that happen all the time. It's interesting sometimes when you have to say what you're thinking out loud, it actually makes it easier to feel more positive. I don't know why, maybe, maybe because like, <laughs> I don't know, it's a little bit less embarrassing to like not be so self-deprecating all the time. All right, whoa, funky proportions, not good. Okay, let's see if we can rescue a little bit of this. At the very least, I know I got the inguinal ligament. Ooh, he's like, a, he's got great thighs. Like, look at those. I feel like I'm lusting after a 17th century photograph. I'm not really lusting. I'm just admiring. I'm admiring the form. <laughs> this is not the same thing as Benedict. <laughs> he's in a whole other category, right? Now I want to watch Sherlock. Oh my god, Sherlock is so good. Tell me in the chat if you watch Sherlock, and if you haven't, shame on you. I'm really, really sorry that that has not been part of your life. Okay. Oh, not warmed up, not feeling it, and I ignored this. All right, so there's my warm-up. That's my time to just mess around. Let's start another one because I really feel like I need to just move on. So let's take a look at the next image, which is another Eugene Duro image. And I'm gonna go to the next page. Oh, wow, there's like old drawings in here. You guys ever do that? Where you like take something out to start drawing and you're like, oh, that drawing's from a long time ago. Okay, now I'm all warmed up. I think, sort of, maybe, who knows? All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna make this one actually a little bit longer because I think I need a little bit more time. Okay, so let's do this as a seven minute pose. And all right, now let's get in rib cage, pelvis. And those of you who are gonna complain that you can't see my marks, I'm gonna tell you that right now my marks don't matter. What matters more, I think, is the motion and the movement. That matters much more than what the drawing looks like. I think a lot of people get very obsessed with the drawing. And really, if you pay more attention to the movements, you'll be able to focus a lot more. Because one thing I do a lot in the classroom is I tell students that I'm not even looking at the drawing. I just look at their movements. I'll just walk around the classroom. and I'll just see, OK, how often are they looking at the model? What is their drawing speed? What is the motion of that? That is actually very, very important. God, this guy's got a crazy center line. What's going on? Okay, let's see what we can do. Weird. Okay, wow. This, this must be the same model because look at this. See this? This is the inguinal ligament. This thing right here. And then this, this is the ASIS. I know you guys can barely see this, but I'm going to try to get this a little bit more complete so you can see better what I'm doing. God, he's got the weirdest thighs. And then his kneecap really is quite pronounced. I like this model. I don't know who you are, dude, from what, the 19th century? That's probably where you're from. Who knows? Proportions are whack. 
Oh, not good. Okay, sorry, inguinal ligament. I think you go up here. I don't think you're really that. Oh, and the head is, yeah. Okay, I think the head should be lower. So really guys, what you're seeing me do, well, you might not be able to see the strokes, but you're watching me think through the marks. Because right now it's almost like I'm doing more thinking than I'm doing drawing. It's like, you're, you're almost like plotting the drawing. And so I just would say for all of you that put less emphasis on what it looks like and just like how you're navigating this whole process. By the way, guys, tell me if you're drawing along. If you're in the chat and you are drawing along with me, let me know because I love it when you guys draw with me. It's just the most satisfying thing to go on Instagram and see what everybody is doing. Sorry, I guess my camera is a little bit too high today. All right. Let's try to get in sternoglottomastoid. His pit of the neck is probably about there. Clavicles are about there. I think his pectoralis, I didn't make it quite wide enough. So keep making changes, you guys. Don't be afraid to just draw right over something. That's okay. You can do that. A lot of people don't want to do it because they worry their drawings are going to be a big mess. But it's like, these are sketches. These are really not meant to look that good. Wow, this guy's got great, he's got like an eight pack. What is going on? Have you guys noticed that when you figure draw, you like can't count anymore? Did anybody see when I like put an extra finger in the Twilight Zone guy the other day? I was like, oh my God, I, I don't have a lot of brain cells left. <laughs> okay, he's looking a little flabby around here. So I think I do want to do a little bit more on the abdomen area. Because one thing I do want you guys to think about when you draw the figure, try not to trace the figure, like just outline, try to draw in the figure. So that's what I'm doing right now as I'm going into the figure and I'm starting to break down and subdivide some of these areas in the middle. And so don't spend too much time on that contour because that contour can really kill you. Okay. I am not, doing a good job of focusing on these legs. Okay, these legs really need to um, get more prominent. I totally did not look at that. I guess because the, the photo is not good. That's good, blame it on the photo. <laughs> have you guys noticed that? I guess that's my new thing where I'm like, oh, the photo doesn't have it. The photo's distorted. I can't, it's like a really good excuse. I guess when you're drawing from life, you don't have an excuse because it's like right in front of you. You can't do anything more than that. Okay, I'm slowing down, which I don't like, and I need to pick up the pace. He doesn't really have a foot. I guess I can't really see it very well. Okay, I'll come back to that. Let's, um, hmm. I'm gonna take a better look at, his head is way too small. Maybe, you know, I don't think I got the tilt of the head. Keep looking at the gesture and you guys will notice that you do really, I think, have to exaggerate it quite a bit because if you don't, it can be very hard to see. Okay. Yeah, I feel like uh, I really got to slow down to work on this area. This whole abdomen area turned to tapioca pudding. Sounds good. I like tapioca. All right. I do like chocolate pudding better though. Between the two, tell me, which would you rather have? Tapioca pudding or chocolate pudding? Tell me which one you'd rather have. I would like to figure out how you guys function. <laughs> All right. Yep, still warming up. Not a lot going on. Now I feel like I'm just repeating myself. See, I don't like that where I feel like I'm not adding new information. And I guess because I'm holding off on the tone. And honestly, I don't know why I'm holding off on the tone because I really should have done it by now. So there we go. All those things that I'm supposed to know so well <sighs> go out the door sometimes. You know, what the heck? Let's just put it in some of the tone because we did this a little bit last time. I think some of you guys saw the technique. Everybody remember my rug of tone? That was how I defined it. So that way you can just really establish some of the bigger areas of shadow. It's just a good way to give the figure really quick mass without having to work too hard. Wow, he's got a great pit of the neck, nice. Although I do like his sternoclonomastoid better. <laughs> Not as much as Michael's, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't like anybody's as much as Michael's. All right. 
deltoid, uh, bicep. I flaked out on this hand. This hand is not good. <sighs> okay, this is this is like sausage fingers. Okay, there we go. All right, there's seven minutes. So let's stop and reset. And what I'm going to do is take a short break so I can take a look at some of the activity that is going on in the chat. See what you guys are talking about. All right, let's see. Calm Cuke says, I used your tip for drawing really light at the beginning. It allowed me to make marks I typically wouldn't. And at the end, it was a much nicer sketch than what I usually do. Very cool. Yeah, staying lighter longer. It's like you're delaying a commitment because once you guys put a dark mark on your drawing, it's there. I mean, yes, technically speaking, you could erase it, but I feel like just mindset wise, it feels permanent because it's on the paper. And so really what you're giving yourself is flexibility so that you don't have to make a commitment really, really fast. Builder D is saying, are you saying you draw super light on purpose so you can't see it? You draw the whole body with no marks, learn it, then actually draw with marking. That makes sense now. Yep, that's pretty much it. You want to write my syllabus, Builder D? Because that was very articulate. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just, you can't make any decisions that early in the drawing. And honestly, half the time, I feel like I'm just feeling up the paper. <laughs> like That's really part of it, is just being like, oh, it's a little here, it's a little there. You're not really making marks until you've actually spent some time physically touching the paper. Starving Artist says, yay, made it to this live. I've been enjoying these heaps. Would the other art prof artists do some of the live drawing sessions too so we can see different approaches and processes? I would like to. I think it would be super fabulous to do something like that. Um, which brings up, by the way, if you guys have not heard about this, we have a spring raffle. So look at, which way am I pointing? This way. <laughs> see? See this slide? Okay. Go to artprof.org click on the homepage, there is a link to the spring raffle because in a nutshell, we're having some growing pains, guys. We're getting too big for our staff and our budget. And if we want to do more stuff like that, like live drawing streams with the TAs, with me, if you guys want me to provide more resources and get our studio tutorials out sooner, donate to our raffle. And you know something else? We have so many super cool prizes, you guys. For example, did you know that if you make a one-time $150 donation, you could win the original gouache painting in our gouache tutorial? If you pledge $1 monthly on Patreon, you could win my book. We also have this super cute sticker that Jordan the Kraken Foster and Victoria Lynn made. Jordan is a TA, Victoria was staff. Or you can get mystery art supplies. So this raffle is pretty cool. I really recommend it because you know something, guys? I love working on art profs so much, but there's such a limit to what we can do because our budget's just not enough. And the thing is we need the administrative staff because up until now, it's been okay me doing that, but it's not okay anymore. <laughs> like we're just getting so big that we're outgrowing all of that stuff. Ripple of Aqua says, I'm drawing along. That last image really screwed me over on the center line. I know his center line was all like wiggly and weird. Like, dude, what did you do at the gym? Like, who is your trainer? Sam is asking about what materials. Okay, let me pop up the slide that has the art supplies. If I can find it, I thought I had it in here. I am using the, oh, here we go, charcoal paper. So we're using charcoal paper and I'm using a Caran d'Ache Neo Color One crayon. You can use any color. I happen to like using earth tones because I think they're just a little bit prettier, gives a little bit of spice. Kate Chandler is saying, would you say keeping a consistent pace is important? Not necessarily. I think the more important thing, Kate, is that you work quickly and jump around. That I think is more important than a consistent pace. Because I think what's problematic, especially if you're trying to do good pr proportions, is if you work on a figure drawing and you get stuck on one section and, and you just really focus on, say, the foot for 10 minutes and you don't work on anything else. That, I think, is a bigger problem. So it's not so much consistent pace as much as it is equal treatment of all of the parts of the body so that they develop 
and progress at the same rate. That's the more important thing. Yellow Hat Art says, what do you do with all the paper you use for this stream? <laughs> a lot of it goes in the recycle bin. Some of it just gets tossed in a portfolio somewhere because, oh my goodness, I'm so disorganized with art supplies. Linda Trong says, can someone make a compilation of Professor Liu saying body part names for enthusiasm is <laughs> so cute. Hey guys, we haven't even gotten to the muscles yet, okay? The muscle, oh man. Guys, tensor fascia lata. Oh, I love that. I mean like sternum, fine. Sternum is all right. A chromium process, that's, oh, that's nice. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. A chromium process is good. So are clavicles, clavicles are fine, but guys, nothing beats rectus femoris and tensor fascia lata. It's, it's so good. So just wait till we get to the muscles. It's going to be really, really fun. Kaylin Griffin says, do you recommend figure drawings for undergrad portfolios? If so, if you can't work from life nude, should we just use pictures? I mean, right now <laughs> we don't have an option. Nobody has the option to work from a nude model. So I would suppose that in this situation, that's fine. I don't think it's the best thing, but it's, the best situation that you can make of a difficult situation. So yeah, I think that would be okay. But I think ultimately it is better someday when hopefully the world gets back to normal, you will be able to have access to a live model. Starving Artist says, spring raffle prizes, are they for international pledges or just US ones? Okay, well, good question. So what I would do is go to the page because there are certain prizes that are not available for international people just because the shipping is so astronomically expensive, you guys. I mean, once you've paid $70 to ship a package to Germany, you're traumatized. So like, we just don't have the budget for that. But we do have other prizes that you are eligible for. So just make sure that you take a look at all that because not everything is available to all the international people because of the crazy shipping. Okay, guys, let's do a, let's do a much longer one because I'm feeling that itch. So how about let's do a 12 minute pose. And let me see who is up for, I believe we're going to look at Laura Aguilar, but I could be wrong. So, okay, let me get back into my position and we will get started again. Here we go. All right. Let me see who's my next image. I can't remember who is up next. All right, so Eugene Duro, we've had our way with you. We're done. Ooh, this is a cool photo, you guys. I'm very, very excited to do this one. So this is Laura Aguilar, and if you guys don't know her work, you should look her up. She's a really, really interesting photographer, and she is really, honestly, one of the few artists I could find that took photographs of people who were not size zero, like people who actually have a very different body shape. So I'm really, really excited to do this. Um, actually, you know what I might have to do for this? I might have to flip my drawing board this way. Let me see, you know, let me just make a quick adjustment on my camera because I think that um, you guys aren't gonna be able to see this very well if I don't adjust the section of my webcam so you guys can see the top a little bit better so i'm just going to move this down because the the shape of this photograph it's a little bit different than what we've been doing okay so hopefully let's see if i stay there okay good we'll do that all right let's do a 12 minute pose and again hang out in the chat Tell me what you guys are learning, what you're seeing, what you're noticing about this process. Okay, let me just feel her out in terms of size. I don't want to get too big because I want you guys to be able to see everything. Okay, so let's go in here. All right, so this is about the torso. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say, you guys, in the beginning of this, don't look at my marks look at my hand, look at my wrist. What choices am I making to make this happen? Actually, I'm going to adjust this a little bit more because this is so wide and I got to draw a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to pull this out my webcam and then you guys can see a little bit better. Okay, there we go. That gives me just a little bit more space. Yeah, 
better. Okay. I'm, j I'm just one of those people, like if I feel a little bit constricted, it's not good <laughs> when it comes to drawing. Okay. So here I'm trying to find the rhythm. Yeah, I'm probably making my mad face right now. Apparently I look very mad and squinty. I guess because I squint a lot when I draw. Okay, let's move this over a little bit. So when I'm looking for now, I'm looking at kneecaps because with a larger figure, you don't have as many bony landmarks that are as obvious, but you do have things like the kneecaps. Like this kneecap here is very large. And then this foot goes up. And I do think you guys, it really helps I don't know if anybody else does this, but try not to say I'm drawing a person. It has to look like a person. If it doesn't look like a person, I'm a terrible human being. Don't do that. That is not a healthy mindset, okay? Just see it as a series of shapes. That is more important than anything else. And if you see it as shapes and you look carefully, hopefully all that stuff falls into place eventually. Okay, and I am actually gonna add a little bit, like there's this like reflective pool that she's sitting next to. I am gonna place that because I do think that it helps to do a little bit of the environment. Okay, hopefully you guys can see this. All right, I'm, God, I feel so slow today. I feel like I'm not moving the way I should. I don't know, it's sort of weird. Like I, I sort of oscillate between thinking, okay, go fast, go fast. And then part of me is like, no, 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 you gotta look. You gotta look closer. It's, it's tricky because there's a time and a place for both things. Both things matter. It's just, I get really sad when my drawings don't have a lot of energy. Okay, does everybody see this point? Okay, so right now, probably you can barely see, but like the last stream, I'm gonna start putting in the tone actually because I need that rug of tone. So I'm gonna just start blocking in some of these big shapes. I'm gonna keep it pretty light. And actually even some of this pool, I'm just gonna toss in a couple marks just to contextualize it. Because you know what? You can't draw nude floating people all the time. You just can't. I mean, it's okay for a little while, but after a little bit, you gotta stop. Okay, so let's block in. See this leg down here, this is like a real anchor point. So I'm gonna really emphasize that. This kneecap back here, very substantial. And then there's this like patch of shadow under the foot that I'm gonna show. And actually this arm is quite dark as well. Like that. Geez, that's really weird looking, isn't it? So probably you guys, what I'm looking at looks very mushy to you, okay? That's on purpose. You don't want to be making hard decisions just yet. Okay, now see this face? I'm not really gonna have time to get into the face that much, but I do want to indicate a little bit of where the cheekbones are because I feel like if I don't do that, I'm gonna get lost really, really fast. And this arm, I gotta find the elbow, I think is maybe here. I'm gonna guess the elbow is here and that's gonna put the tricep up here. These are all approximations. Um, sorry, I know you guys can't see this hand that I'm drawing, but I got to put it in because I'm going to be totally lost. So does everybody see the drawing is really unfinished. Let me make this photo a little bit smaller. Sorry, I know it's going to be really small for you guys, but I know it's blocking part of the drawing as well. It'll be a little bit easier. Okay, let's try that. Okay, now I feel a little bit better because you know something, actually somebody said something in one of my streams the other day, I cannot remember who it was, but they said that they felt like they were watching me sculpt while I draw. And I think that's a great observation because really that is how I think about it. I, I don't say to myself, I am making a two dimensional drawing. I say I'm making form. And that really is what sculpting is, is you're making form. It's the biggest power trip, actually. <laughs> I think being a sculptor, being an architect, it's like, oh, power trip. That's awesome. I don't know. There's something about making a giant building that's so cool. And then also just sculpture. It's clay. It's so primitive, right? It's like playing God, I suppose. It's maybe how some people would see it. Yeah, I'm a little bit timid today. 
But maybe that's because I feel like I was a little spazzy last time. Do you, you guys ever think about your last session and think about all the things you didn't like <laughs> that you did and then thought to yourself, okay, in this session, I'm not going to be such a spaz. Or in this session, I'm really going to pay attention to the landmarks because I did not do that last time. That's what I'm doing right now is I, I'm just trying to remember, okay, what did I screw up? the last time and how can I do a better job with it? See, like here, let me move this over. This foot is really tricky because this is the kneecap, here's the gastrocnemius, and then the heel is behind it. So this is really foreshortened, like this leg is strange, really, really weird. This is where it's like you really need that anatomy to help explain things for you. Okay, here I'm gonna bring out the kneecap because the kneecap is pretty important. And I love this little fold of flesh. It's like so beautiful. Sheesh. Thank you, Laura Aguilar, for making such incredible photos for me to draw from. Um, I feel better about the drawing from photos thing because I'll tell you, for the longest time, I really hesitated about doing these live drawing streams because it just bothered me so much. This concept of drawing live from photos, I, I just did not like it. Like it totally went against every single artistic principle in my body, I suppose. But now that I'm drawing from these photos that are by bona fide photographers, I'm not drawing these like super tacky photos from whatever drawing website people are getting them from. I feel like it's a little bit better. I feel, I feel a little bit less compromised. And also, I mean, if you guys get to learn about new photographers along the way, that is cool. And I, I hope that you guys are. I hope you're noticing photographers that maybe you didn't know about before. Okay, now see, okay, this is a beautiful section here. Does everybody see the breasts, how there's this gravity to them? Because the thing about breasts that you need to remember in terms of anatomy is that they sit on the rib cage and there's no cartilage or structure. It's all soft tissue. So you have to look at the direction. So like this breast is going this way this breast is going that way. So they really, I guess they have a mind of their own <laughs> in the context of this photo. Okay, and let's put in some of the nipples, which are here. This is over here because those are an important landmark. I might actually work on this one longer because I just love this figure. This figure is so beautiful. And I, I just love the interaction of the masses. I think that's really, really fun to see. And I don't know. I always feel like I want to finish everything. So it's, it's hard to move on sometimes, especially like sometimes I feel like I need to do a good drawing to prove that I can still draw. I don't know. Does everybody else do that? <laughs> Cause I'm like, I know I can draw, but part of me goes, can you, can you still draw? Let's see it. <laughs> okay. Let's, Cause I really want to show like the, the form here is beautiful and I want to show how it moves. That would be really cool if I could uh, capture it, which I'm not happy with right now, but I think I gotta, I gotta be more expressive with the marks. The marks are a little bit boring to me right now. I don't think I'm doing a great job in that area. Um, let's get in, like here is the crease of where the forearm and the upper arm happen. And you know, I got lazy and I did not do this hand. That was not good guys. Not good. Don't do what I just did. Don't leave out the hand and say, I'll put it in later. That's not a good idea. At the very least, just, just something. Like, see, that's not a lot, but it's better than what I had before. And at least now I have a little bit more of an indication of what exactly is going on in that area. Oh, there's a beautiful skin fold here. This is like, yeah, like, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Like, look at this big plane of shadow. And then actually, I really should get the belly button in. The belly button is such a good landmark so here here's what i'm looking at there's like a shadow shape here there's a highlight here there's a shadow underneath quite a bit here i see i'm holding off on the really black shadow here i know this is really dark but i sort of don't want to do it too dramatically because i feel like it's a little bit too much of a commitment and i don't want to do that just yet sorry i know this is making my laptop shake <laughs> sorry Although that to me says that you're getting into it when you make your drawing board shake. Okay, I really want to get this. Let's go in and, and just, yeah. Ooh, that felt good. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to start 
developing more of the kneecap. Kneecap is really significant like that. And I do, let, let's just go in and do a little bit more texture here like that. And see, there's a beautiful layout there. God, everything is beautiful today. Have you guys noticed I have not said my favorite word crap 18 times already? We're already like 40 minutes into the stream. I have, I've been very controlled today. <laughs> I guess it's just you have different moods, different days that you draw. Some days you're just mad the whole time. Other days you're like, this is easy. Although I don't know, that doesn't happen all the time. Just once in a while, just when you're feeling really lucky. All right, I, I really want to get on that kneecap because that kneecap really helps. And oh, this leg, I totally neglected this. Okay, here we go. So there's this like, I guess you can sort of see the big toe here. There's sort of a dark shadow underneath it. And then this is all shadow too. Again, the photo's a little bit distorted. It's a little bit hard to see. All right, let's do a reset. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take and take a short break and I'm gonna look at comments. And then if you guys want, I can work on this one more or we can start another one. So let me switch scenes. Let's take a look at what you guys are saying in the chat. Okay. Free D Moon is saying, I think it helps you learn to focus on important lines and shapes when you have time limits. Yep, I really like the time limits. I mean, I know I'm saying crap, 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 but it definitely, I think it's an incentive. It's something to give you that extra nudge. I think that's really, really important because, you know, it's sort of like, who, who else did this? I did this for a few days at the beginning of the lockdown where I was like, okay, finally, <laughs> I'm going to finally get some sleep and I'm going to stay in my pajamas. You can only do that for like two days before you start to feel really, really crappy. And so I feel like the time limit is just this opportunity for me to just like wake up and because I need to be woken up. I think that's a really important part of that. Freedy Moon says, I wish I did plump figures in my class. All I had was skinny Brian, who was used in all three of my courses. One time he stood naked talking to me eating an egg sandwich. Oh gosh. Yeah, that, that's a little bit awkward. <laughs> you guys, I've got some good model stories. Like I had this one model. Oh, he's such a sweetheart. But he did this thing where he brought in this really corny kitten calendar and he hung it on the wall. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, well, I just like to look at the kittens. It just relaxes me when I'm posing. <laughs> it's like, okay, we have a floats your boat, dude. That's really, really cool. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Yellow Hat Art says drawing with a timer really refreshes the mind. And looks like a lot of people are wanting me to continue working on this one. Yeah, I feel like I want to. Um, and I'm feeling like... I'm fighting the charcoal paper a little bit because the charcoal paper, it's a lot less sensitive than the newsprint. And so I have to work harder to get more results. Like on newsprint, I don't have to press that hard. I can get a mark really quickly. But with charcoal paper, I feel like because it's more durable, you do have to be more physically aggressive with it. I think that can be very helpful. Neil is saying, I use a cheap crown. It sucks. I can't get a flat rug of tone. Yeah, some of the crowns, Neil, the mix, the blend of them, it's not very smooth. And so it ends up sort of funky and grainy. So it's a little bit challenging. Holly is saying, do you think composition matters in figure drawings? I don't think so for this. Not at all. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just thinking about form. Plus I'm using someone else's composition. This is not my composition. So I don't feel like it would be fair for me to say that I'm doing that. Jesse is saying, do you key your drawings or artificially manipulate value ranges? I don't know what you mean by key, Jesse. Maybe if you want to explain that a little bit more, hopefully I can answer that. I guess what you're asking about manipulating value ranges, I don't try to get them precise. I don't because I don't care. <laughs> I just try to capture what I think is the mood of the piece. I care way more guys about mood and personality than I do about accuracy. You guys ever see this thing where 
you see something that's photorealistic of say a person or a pet and like technically speaking it's very accurate but it doesn't feel like the cat and so you can have a gesture drawing that is not accurate but it feels like the cat that that's the difference i don't care about the accuracy thing because honestly just take a photo it's way way faster okay bethany is saying Clara and Kira, thanks for everything. Gotta go. Have a great night. Thank you for stopping in, you guys. Okay, I think I'm going to work on this some more because I just feel like I'm not giving Laura Aguilar any justice. And I love her photos and I just don't feel like I've done a great job with that. So let's do another, um, let's do 10 minutes, see how far we can get it. And then we'll see what we have time for. Okay, let's grab... 10,000 Crows says, any specific tips for capturing the mood of the piece? I think what helps, and this sounds really stupid, but you know what, it actually does help. <laughs> Just tell yourself out loud, what is the mood? If you can identify and verbally say what the mood is, then it's easier for you to actually produce that. So I would recommend doing that. So tell me in the chat, what is the mood of Laura Aguilar's photo. What do you think the mood is? Because I don't think her photo is that clear. I think it's somewhat ambiguous, but that's why I think it's really interesting. Kayla is saying, how do you decide which details to leave in, which to take out? Yeah, that's a tricky thing. I think for me, I ask myself, what's the priority? What are the lines I cannot live without? Because there's usually a couple lines where it's like, yeah, it's okay if they make it in, but it's all right if they don't. So I liken it to if your house is burning down, what are you going to take first? I'll get my kids out first and then my laptop. <laughs> I love how that's my order of priority. Claire Bear is saying, how long do you typically draw in a session? How long do you prefer? I tend to lose steam very fast. Honestly, guys, I've been doing these streams about 80 minutes or so. And to me, that's not enough. It, it's like barely scraping the surface. I think for figure drawing, I really need minimum two hours to get anything done, ideally three. I would say after three, I get really tired. So it depends on the person. Maria saying, what kind of images and theme do you prefer for practicing foreshortening? I mean, I think foreshortening is really interesting with the human figure because lots of weird, weird things happen. Actually, if you guys wanna see my absolute favorite foreshortened figure, I'll type it into the chat. It is called the dead, Christ by Andrea Montaigne. Look it up. It's so strange. And also look up the drawings by Paul Cadmus because he's somebody who loves foreshortening. So they're great references for you guys to look at if you're thinking about foreshortening. Holly is saying, how can you tell if you foreshorten correctly? You know what? Don't worry about correct, guys. You'll notice that when I talk about figure drawing, I don't use words like correct, precise, right. I, I don't use those words. And I really have trained myself to not use those words because I don't think that's what we're here to do. If we were, I would take a photo and call it a day. So I think maybe the way I would phrase the question, Holly, how can you tell if you've achieved convincing foreshortening? Here's how you can tell. You know how you can tell? When it looks really weird. <laughs> Who here has Googled the Montaigne painting? Tell me if you can, how weird that, it's so weird. And foreshortening always looks weird. You should never try to make it look normal. It never will. So if anything, just make it look more weird than you normally um, would think about it. Okay, let's do 10 more minutes on this drawing. So let me get back into my spot. All right, get my things back into place. Pull up the image. So let's see, we're going to the demo scene. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this down even more because I think that will help you guys see it a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now there's a little bit more of that. Okay, there we go. I'll, I'll try to hold it so you guys can see that. Yeah, this, this just feels really tame to me right now. I want to give it a little bit more bite. I, I feel like it, it's a little too nice 
as a drawing right now. And I want it to have more of a edge to it for lack of a better word. Okay, here we go. Let's get going. Okay, let's see. So let's do some reevaluation. This is what I like to do when I'm further along in the drawing and I'm like, what do I do next? I say, where is the emergency? What is the part of the drawing that is the least worked on? In this case, it's definitely the face. This arm is barely in there. And now I guess the feet are fine. Okay, so I really need to work on this side. So I'm gonna push this over a little bit so you guys can see that face better. And actually I do wanna make this a little bit larger because I'm having a little trouble seeing the entire image. Okay, here we go. So yeah, weird facial expression. Well, sort of lack of facial expression really. And I'm gonna slow down a little bit and start to indicate cheekbones up here, maybe the brow, and then maybe at the very least, show a little bit better where the hair is. Yeah, I, I really would need to slow down to like really work this mouth. So it's a little bit of a mess right now, but that's okay. And I think I need to pump up a lot of this. Yeah, see what drives me crazy about photography, do you guys see the like the really sharp cast shadow that the breast is making? Like that to me is so problematic in photography because it, it doesn't have any depth. It's really, really flat. And so I have really have trouble with photographs for that reason because they're, they're too flat. They're really, really hard to deal with. Okay, this arm is sort of, yeah, this arm is going off the page. Actually, I'm not even gonna, the arm, whoa, what did I do? Sheesh, the arm is like all the way over here. Okay, yeah, I don't even think I'm gonna get the hand in there. The hand should be like, yeah, no way, no way. Okay, so the hand is more like that. Okay, that feels a little bit better because that was a little bit funky the way I had it before. Okay, I think what I really need to do, this point here, this is so beautiful, the way that the form gets in. And I want to get more physical. This crown is a little bit smudgy. I mean, this isn't perfect for charcoal paper, but the newsprint was starting to drive me a little crazy because it's so not permanent and it's really hard. Okay, this is what I really want to do. I want to tackle the texture and the skin is amazing, isn't it? Okay, look, look at this, guys, see this? I know this is sort of small, but there are these like, almost like stretch marks. I don't know what that is. It's sort of like a texture in the skin, like that. And I just want to get some of that in there. And I, I got to put it in more other spots because right now it looks like, I don't know, somebody put chocolate chips on it or something. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. So, okay, we got to get a little bit more inventive. So here guys, look at how I hold this and look at how I get the texture. I think I'm probably not being aggressive enough and I really want this drawing to be bigger. Ugh, it's bugging me that it's so small. If it was bigger, I, I would feel a little bit less constricted, but whatever, that's okay. Can't have an excuse for everything, right? Sometimes you just gotta deal like that. Okay, now this is what I really want. See, like this part should be like really dramatic and now this should really come together. Okay, that's starting to get more satisfying, <laughs> okay? Um, and tell me if you guys are drawing along and if you are drawing along, use Art Prof Share because this is technically not the art dare. The art dare is to draw from a TV or movie. I think this week it's like Water for Chocolate for The Leap, any of you guys who are doing The Leap. And I can't remember the other one. Anyway, maybe one of you guys remembers. <laughs> I don't have a lot of brain cells left today. Today was so crazy. I had to like drive really far to do a video shoot. Then I had to give a lecture. Then I had to like feed people. It was kind of a weird day. Okay. Yeah, I definitely, I need to pump up the contrast. See, I, I just want the form. I'm not worried about outlines. I just want the form. That is what I'm after here. Think about it like a sculptor. We need 
I, I feel like I need some energy. There's like no energy in this drawing. It's not happening. Ugh. Okay. I, I feel like this drawing has gotten past the, the honeymoon stage. You guys ever have that where you're like in the honeymoon stage with the drawing? You're like, oh, it's not far enough along for me to have ruined it. Still has potential. And now we're past that stage where I'm like, okay, ruined it. <laughs> uh, that, that's why I think um, longer drawings can be very hard to sustain. You, you lose the, the momentum sometimes is very easy. Like I actually used to teach, I used to teach at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts many, many years ago. I was really young. I was like 28 or something back then. And I think um, I used to teach a class there. It was called Long Pose Portrait Drawing. And so we do portrait drawings that were like six hours long because they were crazy long, but they were hard. A lot of people were like, oh, this will be easy. I have all the time in the world. And they're not actually that easy. They're, they're challenging. You have to think about how to pace yourself. It's almost like running a marathon. Ugh. Now, I, I feel like ugh, maybe see. OK, now I'm at a point where I, I just want to look. This is important, like the, the seeing and the choosing, because you are choosing. You, you don't have to draw everything. Like somebody had said earlier, how do you choose what to draw? How do you choose what to skip? I mean, there's no correct answer to that, obviously. Everybody has a different means of doing that. Oh, I know. I got to tuck the, see, the face is sort of tucked behind. Yeah, and th this, okay, this this shadow, I think I really just have to nail it in there. I don't like making it so dark, but whatever. I, I don't think I can get around that because it's just so, like, okay. Okay, guys, you know what? I just had a flash of Kathy Collowitz envy. Does anybody have that? <laughs> I'm like, if Kathy Collowitz was drawing this, it would be so much better. Her marks would be more confident than yours. She wouldn't put up with that she would have much more structure and be way more efficient. Okay, I'm having my Kathy Collowitz moment. Oh, you know what? It's this, this is not big enough. That's that, oh my God, how did I miss that? Okay, duh. Okay, oh, okay, here we go, here we go, let's do it. Sorry, I know I'm like shaking my <laughs> laptop right now. It's just, it's hard because the, Charcoal paper is a lot denser than the newsprint, so I have to press a lot harder. We, we gotta get some, gotta get some spice into here. Okay, let me move aside so you guys can see the feet a little bit better. So I think you guys can probably guess, like I'm a tone person. Like I am not that into line. Like line is not my strength. So you can see a lot of what I'm doing is not line work. There are some people who are really good at line. I am not one of them, okay? I'm somebody who's like, tone! Tone will rescue me from all of my other faults. Oh, shoot. All right, it's getting there. I just, it still feels mushy. But the thing is like, I don't really wanna put in super accentuated areas at the same time because I feel like that'll make it really tight. I don't know, I'm sort of on the fence about all of this. I, I still don't feel like this drawing has bite. Ugh, crap. All right, there we go. I said crap, see? <laughs> I don't feel like that's the best catchphrase. I feel like I should have a better one. I should have one that's more positive. Crap is not really, I think what you want to be known for as an artist. <laughs> all right, let's get some reflected light onto that breast area. Yeah, see, th this breast is not good. It looks like concrete. It looks so bad. Not even close, Clara, jeez. Okay, let, let's get a little bit more shading on it. Maybe that will make it. it. It's like these shadows are driving me crazy. It just, it's gotta be a little softer looking. I mean, if I had the time, I would go in and, and get into all the nitty gritty, but that's not an excuse. It really is not. Like that. Okay, all right. Here we go. Maybe just a couple more strokes to show the texture of the stomach because I love the stomach. The stomach is amazing. Give it more body up here. So now I'm gonna try not to hold back so much because I definitely need to just push this in. 
give her her kneecap back. Maybe this one can be a little bit more pronounced. All right, guys, I think that's it for this image. All right, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. So let's come up here, see what's going on, what you guys are learning, because I love it when you guys learn. It's just the greatest thing. All right. Neil says, I have a classmate that likes to critique my art every time he does He's like, oh, this bump should be bigger. This should be darker. It makes me feel awkward. You know what? You're going to get people like that. And I think that they probably are trying to help, which is fine. But I think they probably don't realize that that's not really the point of what you're doing. Because I don't think drawing is copying. There's a real difference. And a lot of it's in your mind. Like, what are you really after? Because I really think some people just want to get that result. They want to replicate, but don't worry about it. I mean, everybody has friends and family that honestly just have no idea <laughs> what this is all about. You just smile, you just, it's fine. <laughs> like we've all had that situation before. Blighted Angel says, but the shadows being so sharp make the collection of shapes feel geometrical. Yeah, that's where working from photos driving me up the wall. Because if I saw this figure that I just drew in real life, I wouldn't see that. I would actually get to see the form that's inside the cast shadow. Now in the photo, you can't, it's just flat black. And so that is a limitation of drawing from photos. Maria says, I think it's the weight of the belly pressing an area too tightly, which shows the cellulite. It certainly grounds and give a real weight to the figure. Yellow Hat Art says, I love how you adjust your wrist to the direction of the shadow and lines in the figure creates a more organic gesture. I find it difficult to do with the shape of the pencil. Yeah, that's one of the reasons, guys, why I like using just like a piece like this, because this to me feels more like an object than it does like a tool. And so when you have something like this, you're much more likely to like turn it around and twist it. I feel like with a pencil, there's a more obvious top and bottom. So I don't know. I just like this because I feel like a cave person, <laughs> like drawing on the wall, Caves of Lascaux. I sort of love that idea. It's really cool and fun. Maria says, I think this image is gorgeous. The drawing with lines could be amazing, but the tones in it are so amazing that having them translated with tones was so spot on. Well, I'm a tone person. I mean, that's the only way I can do it. Eva Hatam is saying, what kind of charcoal is that? It's not charcoal, actually. It is Caran d'Ache Neo Color One Crayon. So I like them because they look like charcoal, but you don't have to spray fix them because they're really smooth and really easy to work with. Ripple of Aqua says, I know you don't want to be remembered for not always talking PG. <laughs> just tells me you're a real human being and I appreciate all the verbal facilities. <laughs> Guys, my stream in real life, it would not be PG. It would so not be PG. <laughs> you should see what it's like when the TAs are at my house. Oh my God, it is. Well, actually me and Tom, Tom, my business partner, we're both really bad together. It's, it's bad because we egg each other on and then we're like, yeah, it's okay. It's normal. Everybody swears like this all the time. And then people are like, oh, like horrified. Let's see. Albert says, I think I'll try the technique of figure drawing. Been meaning to learn about how shadows move with figures as well as to get more mileage with values. Sam is saying, do you think drawing still lives are good for your artistic development? I'll tell you, Sam, still life really helped me learn how to oil paint. If I hadn't painted still lives when I was learning to oil paint, I would not have figured it out because it was really, really hard for me. And if I had started trying to paint a figure in oil, I would have been screwed. I think the trick with still life is you can't tell yourself still lives are boring. This is going to be boring. If you say that, of course it's boring. That's your fault. Still lives can be really fun. We have really cool still life videos on art prof. There's one where we have a jackfruit and a lobster. It's like really, really cool. It's, it can be super fun. Just don't make it boring. Don't be one of those people who's like, oh, here's a sphere. Here's the peach. Here's a stupid buzz. This is boring. Don't do that. Make it fun. Okay. Jillian is saying, what's the difference between charcoal paper and other kinds? It's the tooth. So if you guys touch 
the surface of charcoal paper. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. I don't know, maybe you guys can see it a little bit in the photo. Does everybody see this photo? Actually here, <laughs> this photo. Everybody see this photo that there's like those like long tracks? That is the texture that you will get in charcoal paper and so that it will hold the powdery substance of the charcoal. Kayla found us two weeks ago, did your first gesture drawing after finding the anatomy series. Quick strokes instead of fluid motion like you, do you recommend your way more? My thought, Kayla, is you should try both. My whole feeling about stuff is that there's no right or wrong way to do things and not everything is gonna work for you that works for me, but you should try both. I think the problem is when people say, oh no, I don't wanna do that. And I'm like, why? They're like, oh, cause I know this works. And I'm like, yeah, but you haven't tried it yet. So you just gotta try it. I don't tend to like the shorter quick strokes because for me, it breaks up the motion. So if I'm trying to go like top to bottom, side to side with a figure, it's really hard if it's like all chopped up. I find that hard to do. For me, I feel that there's a more, um, I guess I would say fluid rhythm that I feel I can sit onto a little bit better. Annie is saying, is it important to draw gestures on a large scale? Just a matter of preference. I think it is good to draw them big because I'll tell you, I feel that I see a lot of high school students who won't draw anything bigger than eight by 10. And I do think that becomes a limitation because then people are afraid to make stuff bigger. So for example, back when I used to teach freshman drawing, I used to make the students do three foot by four foot drawings every single week. And a lot of them thought they were gonna die because they went oh, three foot by five, I can't, it's so gigantic. And a lot of them had never drawn anything that big. They would freak out. But you know something? It was like that for a while and then they'd get used to it. And then by the end of the semester, if I said to them, oh, can you make a two foot by two foot drawing? They go, oh, no problem. So it's sort of a matter of expanding your range so that you're not so easily intimidated by things because I don't think that's a good thing. If you are given a task and your first reaction is, oh no, that's too big, I can't do that. That's not a good reaction. I think that it's better to have a broader range of skills. Yellow Hat is asking, are they water soluble? That's a good question. They make them water soluble when it's Neo Color 2, okay? So this one I'm using is Neo Color 1. This one is not water soluble, but Neo Color 2 is. So you just gotta make sure that you read the label. Okay. Let's do another pose. So let me see what is up next. Let me get back into my drawing position. And I think there's a Maplethorpe piece that I want to do because there's a really cool set of clavicles that I'm very excited about. Okay, so let's go back to the demo scene. All right, and we're going to take away Laura Aguilar. And I think... Yeah, let's do this Maplethorpe. This is like a really intense Robert Maplethorpe piece. Okay, here we go. New sheet of paper. And on this one, I would like to really spend some time on the torso. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the whole figure, but I'm gonna develop the torso more. So that way we can really get into some of those details. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at the next image, which is this Robert Maplethorpe piece. Okay, I'm gonna make this, you know, I'm gonna start it small and then I'll make it bigger when I wanna focus on the torso. So this one, let's do, let's make this a 15 minute pose. 15 minutes like that. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. All right, I think I, I'm getting there. I'm gonna use a darker one this time so that way I can get a broader range of value because I love the sepia, but sometimes a darker brown is a little bit better. This is a great pose, guys. I hope some of you are drawing along with me because wow, this is an amazing, look at that center line. Whoa, okay, so his rib cage for pelvis is here. Oh, and I think I, Put it too far to the right. Maybe I should, no, I guess that's okay. All right, so if this is the center line, 
there's the center line, which is very curvaceous. And then the thigh comes up here. I don't actually know who this is a photo of, but he looks like a dancer. I mean, he's got like really buff legs and muscles. Okay, so there's the foot, the leg. Oh, I put this way too low. Okay, hang on, let's move this up. I'm gonna draw a little smaller too. I think the sizing's not great. Does everybody notice how soon I caught myself? I'd only been drawing for like a minute and I already realized the placement and size wasn't good. Catch it early. Don't draw mindlessly for 10 minutes and go, oh, it's too small. Don't do that, okay? Start smaller now. Okay, so let's put the center line here actually. And the center line is there. And I move the torso over here. Yeah, and then that would put, I guess if I, okay. See, he's got a lot of foreshortening in here as well. So if that's the kneecap, and then, oof, I'm really running out of space. Okay, I, I think I gotta make it even smaller. Shoot, okay. So the sizing, you guys, this takes time, all right? Really, really takes time. All right, yeah, I gotta figure this out better. Okay, let's put the pelvis here and let's pull up this thigh over here. Okay, so look at this. In the beginning, I put the thigh down here. Now it's all the way up here. Make changes, guys. A lot of people don't wanna make changes because it's a pain and because you gotta draw over stuff and it's not so fun sometimes, but it's necessary. You have to do that. He's got, oh, I love the way his foot is like all stretchy and weird. And this drawing too also has like a lot of big, um, large black shapes that are making it hard for me to see things, but that's all right. Okay, so here's the stool. And then, okay, so it's good. This, this raises the thigh and pulls that up. And then the gastrocnemius muscle, which is your calf muscle. God, he's got like a really elastic foot. Sheesh, okay. This is a great foot though. It's very expressive, very exaggerated. I'll try to draw it a little bit darker so you guys can see a little bit better. But even here, it's like, I love this heel and then this coming down. Okay, I, I'm lingering, this is not good. Okay, come on, move on, move on. Let's go, come on. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, whoa, that's way too high. Shoot, okay, th this should, okay. You know what though, guys, this is not good. Don't do this. You see what I just did? I have been fussing over the legs and he doesn't even have a head and arms. That is not good, okay? I really should have gotten up there by now. Okay, so let's do this. Go back up here. Let's at least just indicate about where things are because that's the most important thing. Like that this is not good that I let myself do that for so long. That was, okay, this is a lot better. And now I'm seeing, shoot. Oh my God, now everything is like, what? <laughs> here, here's the thing about anatomy. It's like you fix one thing, you gotta fix eight other things. That's what's really hard about it. Okay, and wow, this arm is so weird. Okay, this is strange, this for sure. Anybody here who's drawing along with me, look at the strangeness of that hand. It's like, dude, what is going on there? I guess it's just such a weird pose. And then, all right, this is, this is the thigh. And I think I put the thigh coming out too much. So actually I'm gonna move this here and that then moves this here. Yeah, I hope you guys are seeing how much changes because I do think a lot of people think they have to nail it the first time through and you don't. You do not need to nail it. You're not gonna nail it. Okay, let's just get in the nasal bone. I can't really, see again, it's like that really strong shadow. And then the plane of the arm, um, here's his wrist, identify that, this. And then here, see this, this is his clavicles. Okay, so the clavicles are like up here. This is the pectoralis major muscle, the other pectoralis major muscle, and then like hardcore <laughs> pectoralis major. Okay, now here's the male genitalia, which is here. Okay, and then, oh, I have to, this is too exact, where is that? Okay, this is, Spend some time really looking, you guys. A lot of drawing, 
is looking. You think it's your hand. Your, your hand is only half the battle, really. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Robert Maplethorpe, <laughs> you are giving me a workout in foreshortened figures and anatomy. It's great, though. I love Robert Maplethorpe. Thank goodness he was an artist because I love his stuff. If you guys don't know Robert Maplethorpe, look at him. This, you'll look at his stuff. And you know what's funny is sometimes it's like you see stuff and you're like, oh my God, that looks like everything. It's like he's the one that invented all that stuff. That's what it is when you look at Robert Maplethorpe. Okay, and I do want to articulate a bit of the chair that's coming in. And then fingers that come down. Okay, and you know something? I am going to do a little bit of this background because there are these like hardwood floor lines. I mean, this is linear perspective. This is basically one point perspective. And I, I just want to do it to place the figure. I can't, I really cannot see his stool. It looks like it's floating. Okay, sorry, can't do anything about that. Okay, there we go. Now we have some of that going on. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to focus more on the torso so that we can really start to break this apart because um, then you guys can see better what some of those areas are. Okay, so check this out. Let, let's just really focus on this. So here we go. Clavicle. Ooh, nice pit of the neck. Dude, you're giving it right to me. <laughs> pit of the neck. There we go. Clavicles. Okay, and it is helpful to draw the nipples, not because, well, obviously they're there, but because nipples are not always where you think they are, okay? <laughs> a lot of people think they're like right in the middle. They're not. They're actually a little bit off to the side because they point out. That's the important thing to know, okay? Um, and let's see. Let's just really solidify this. We need to get his center line a lot better. This is just gorgeous musculature. And then in here, and his, I guess his belly button's here. It's a little bit hard to see. I guess it's like there. Okay, and if that's the male genitalia, which is here, and I want to really well establish where this thigh is. Ooh, this is nice. Everybody see how fleshy that is? That was very satisfying. <laughs> okay, and then here, because really what you're looking at, you're looking at the, the flesh, which is pushing against other flesh, like you're looking at the compression of that. And you're asking yourself, okay, like here, this is bony. And there we go. Okay, we're going to go back up here to the neck. I'm sort of chickening out on the face, but that's because I really want to show you guys some of this stuff up here, which I know we're not going to get to if I keep working on the rest of the figure. And by the way, thank you to those of you guys who responded to my community post because I do want to do some longer streams where I maybe draw for like two hours. I just can't today. <laughs> my brain is just the any day that I run a video shoot, my brain is just mush. So I, I can't do it today, but maybe next time. OK. All right. There's a cast shadow here. OK, you know what? I didn't do the I did it again. I didn't do the tone soon enough. OK, here we go. Let's do that rugged tone. He needs his rugged tone coming down. Okay, I gotta make the image a little bit smaller so I can see the whole thing. Let's at the very least just block in all the tones and then I'll come back and I'll go back and do more. The very least, just so we figure out some of the, the spatial things. Because here's the other thing, you guys, that's the other reason I like to draw everything that's in the space is because if you guys just focus on the figure and you don't think about the space around it that's problematic too so even though i'm not going to like really draw all the figure at least i'm just going to indicate where the large areas of darkness are so even a, a negative shape like this is very very helpful it's going to help me really see things better all right, so there's my rugged tone. Okay, I lost the foot. That's okay. It'll come back. That's fine. Oh, shoot. Where where the heck is that? Whoa, that is way too high. Okay. It's a series of adjustments, you guys. This is not you to do hole in one. It's sort of like, you know what I feel like it is? I feel like a lot of people, they, they feel like when they're figure drawing, 
It's like they should hit a bullseye on the first arrow that they shoot. Nobody does that. Well, maybe for Robin Hood. Maybe for Robin Hood you can do that. The the um the good Robin Hood. Errol Flynn Robin Hood, not Russell Crowe and not Kevin Costner. They were bad. Oh, they were terrible. The only movie Russell Crowe was good in was in um Gladiator. But that's really just because he was like angry the whole time. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm sort of liking this one. But you know, I feel like it's it's the photo. The photo is so good. Like I just love this photo. It's a really amazing photo. Okay. Walk in. Maybe more tone down here. And you know something? This area here. Sorry, let me move this stool out of the way so I can push my drawing board a little bit more up and you guys can see this better. But does everybody see here? I, I do want to just indicate the kneecap because that's another bony landmark. And then I do want to show this is like, oh, this is the gastrocnemius. Okay, gastrocnemius should be bigger like that. Okay, I feel like I'm mega exaggerating this, but you know, I don't care. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Because again, it's, it's like, it doesn't matter. Who cares? If you guys want to be correct and stuff, I mean, go do some math problems. Like that's a lot easier. And nobody's going to fight you over one plus one. It's, it's a lot easier that way. So anyway, that's what I think. Maybe it's just because I'm bad at math. Although, you know what's really funny about math is I scored really high on the math SATs and I was not good at math. And I got such a bad score on English and I took honors English all four years. So it's like, it goes to show you how much those score, um, those um, exams, what they really mean, which is like nothing. They don't mean anything. Okay. Let's just, yeah, cause I, I really want to just place this guy spatially. I want to put him somewhere. Okay, he looks like Blackhead. Oh my God, that looks terrible. Okay, let, let's just give him, yeah, that, that looks so bad. All right, let's get in some eye sockets at the very least. And you know, it will help, I think, when I get in something that looks a little less mitten-like. And then he's got a mustache, which is not helping my cause right now, but that's all right. Um, yeah, and I feel like his hair, had I need to establish that a little bit better. I still feel like I'm holding back a little bit. I really should do a little bit. Let's see. Like that. Here we go. All right, let's zoom in, see what more details I can get. Okay. Wow, dude, you've got amazing muscles. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's just really get in guys let's just have some fun now because i'm done holding back we're, we're ready to just motor now on some of these areas like this is just oh so fun <laughs> here we go i think this pectoralis is way too wide it probably should be more like that i'm not really sure oh crap now it uh Okay, this looks really weird. <laughs> it looks like all gelatinous. I don't know. <laughs> He's a lot leaner than I'm making him, but that's okay. All right. Oh, just a few seconds left. Let's just see what we can get in. Just a little bit more. See what we can do there. All right, that is pretty much the end of that pose. Okay, let's take a look at some comments. So let me switch to my other scene. Okay, here we go. Let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. All right, hang on. I'm gonna type a quick message to Kira. Let's see, Holly Laffey says, do you think drawing on toned paper is good for learning tones and values? Yeah, I think it's really helpful because I think that 
when you have just a white sheet of paper, it's like everything is dark. But what I like about starting with a tone sheet of paper, it's like you're starting with substance and then you either take it away or you add more. And I feel that that's a much more sculptural way to go about thinking about things in that way. So yeah, for sure. Okay, let me just pop out to the chat so I can see a little bit better what you guys are saying. Okay, Monique says, seems to me most poses have some foreshortening. It's so tough to pull off. Yeah, I mean, there's different degrees of foreshortening. Like sometimes the foreshortening is really severe and other times it's like just a little sprinkle of foreshortening, sometimes just a little bit. So you have to just really break it down. Uh, uh, let's see, Edelman says, who else thought she was gonna say huge instead of here when talking about the genitalia? <laughs> I have a lot of experience talking about genitalia in a classroom, so there you go. Um, 10,000 Crows says, I feel like the mood of this is a little anxious and calm at the same time. He's got sort of a funny facial expression that is sort of hard to define. I mean, that's sort of what I was saying earlier about defining the mood, because sometimes you don't always know. Sometimes it's not that clear, which I think is actually a good thing. Jojo is saying, what do you think about working with an ebony pencil? They're fine. I mean, I don't typically use them. I happen to like the woodless pencils more because I think that they're a little bit more intense. So this is a woodless pencil. It's basically a pencil that is pure lead. And I just really like these. So yeah, but ethnic pencils are fine. I'm sure those are good too. Somebody wants me to draw Danny DeVito. <laughs> well, if somebody can find like an almost nude version of Danny DeVito, let me know. It's got to be pretty high res though. Otherwise I won't be able to actually see anything. Kayla is saying, why do you draw from so many nude photos and models? Never had an art class. My guess it helps you understand form but it feels so emotional and vulnerable. That's a great question, Kayla. I think it's great that you asked that because you should be asking stuff like that. Like just because you see everybody drawing nudes doesn't mean you should just accept it as being the way to go about doing things. The, the reason why Kayla is because you really whittle it down to its bare bones. Like there's nothing more raw than a human figure that is nude. Like if you do a portrait painting and somebody's wearing a sweater, you can't think about what's underneath because you're just looking at the surface of the sweater. But the thing is, if you just paint the surface of the sweater, you're going to end up with a big blob. <laughs> you're not going to have anything that looks good. And so the idea is if you know how to draw what's underneath, then adding a layer of sweater is not going to be that much more difficult. And I just think another reason why I like to draw from nudes is because basically the human figure is one of the few things on the planet where the structure is exactly the same and yet completely unique in every single person. So we all have skeletons, we all have zygomatic arches, but my zygomatic arch is different than someone else's zygomatic arch. And it's remarkable that you can have that kind of variation and yet have that structure in common. So there's variations upon variations, because here's the thing, like if you guys bought 5,000 eggplants, I don't know why you're doing that. Maybe you have an eggplant parmesan party, but let's say you have 5,000 eggplants, okay? Sure, there's gonna be some variation, but they're all sort of the same in the end. And you think about humans, and the thing is, yes, we all have skeletons, but we're all really different. And so the variation is there, but the structure is there at the same time. Albert saying, how do you know where to place your tones? I just look at where the shadows are. So wherever are the shadows on the figure and wherever there's highlights, I don't put them there. So here I'm very reliant on the photograph. The photograph is giving it to me. Usually if I'm in the studio with a model, it's a little bit more of a creative decision because it's not as obvious unless you have like super strong lighting. Ripple of Aqua says, you said earlier, to focus on getting the torso no one will punch into the legs. I don't think anyone will forgive what I did to this poor man's foot. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to post it later, Ripple of Aqua, because I'm gonna have to evaluate that. Annie is saying there's a nude photo of Danny DeVito and it's all, really? See, I, I could not watch that show, you guys. Like, I know people think it's really funny. 
I, I don't know. I just find the characters so obnoxious. Like, I could not stand them. Let's see. Um, Zach, welcome to the stream. Happy you're here to learn. And Ali is saying, what's the best way to not get frustrated not getting the shapes from the references adequately? Honestly, just stop caring, Ali. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. And I'm not saying stop caring about your art or stop caring about what you're making but stop caring in the moment. Because if you guys are fussing about, does it look good, does it look bad? You're not focusing on the drawing. You've got to focus on the drawing. That's where all your energy, I think, has to go. Charge wants to know exercises to improve. I would say draw from life as much as you can. You can do self-portraits, you can draw friends and family. Um, I think that nothing substitutes drawing from life. I think that is the most efficient direct way to sharpen your skills. Okay, guys, I'm going to do 10 more minutes. Oh, actually, you know what I want to do first, though, before we do 10 more minutes, because I do want to spend a little bit more time on this. I want to show you guys, we have an art prof share today. Very excited. And Keith, I think you are here. Yes, you are in the chat. So we are going to show you guys these figure drawings that Keith Larson did in one of my recent streams. Keith, I believe you were drawing along with me. So if you guys want to look at Keith's Instagram, you can check it out. It's also in the video description below. And Keith is saying that they didn't put that much pressure doodling along, but somehow liked the one based on the Diane Arbus photo, which by the way, is the one that we're looking at right here. So if you guys want to know which stream it is, this is, oops, not that one. Sorry about that. The stream is, oh, I guess I didn't put it in the slide. Anyway, I believe it's, oh wait, I think I have it here. Hang on one second, sorry. <laughs> not that one, it's this one. Okay, there we go, that's the right slide. So if you guys want to see the Diane Arbus photo that Keith drew from, which is this one, it's in that stream, and Keith also has this drawing as well. And these are also Laura Aguilar photos. By the way, Keith, I really like that you put these all together on the same page. I mean, they're from different photos, but they almost feel like a space because the one at the top is so small, it feels like it's a lot farther away. So I really enjoy the way that that accidental composition just came together. So Keith is saying in the description, Figure drawing was atrocious a week ago, but it's amazing what a week of consistent practice from the May Art Dare can do. They have plenty of room for improvement, learned about gesture drawing, major masses, drawing the whole figure first, trying not to pick up the pencil and making multiple passes. But I think the most important lesson was to not be so precious with my artwork and to just keep making it. Yep, guys, sometimes it's that simple. I mean, I know that there's all these tips that I like to give and everybody is always asking for suggestions and that's terrific, but sometimes you just gotta keep working. It's that simple. Just keep working and making because Keith, you are like hitting it out of the ballpark with the May Art Dare. I mean, you are so productive. You guys should check him out. He's doing so much great work on the Art Dare and it's really paying off. It's so satisfying when you see that. So if you guys draw along with me, or you make something in response to the art prof, sh art prof tutorial, go to artprof.org, click on tutorials. On the purple button on the left, there is an art prof share submission form. And so if you would like to be considered to get a YouTube shout out here, you can submit there. Or if you want something more casual, just tag us on Instagram and just show us what you're making. And we love it. It's like the highlight of my day, you guys. I just think it's the greatest thing. So absolutely share that with us and check out Keith on Instagram because he is doing some really, really cool work. Okay, let's move on to the next little bit. I think I'm gonna do another, you know what guys? I feel so unresolved right now that I think I'm gonna go another 15 because I don't know, it's something about the charcoal paper. It's like really slow. It's not as fast as the newsprint and it's really affecting me right now. I sound so whiny, gosh. Okay, um, let's take a look at the figure again. Okay, I think what I need to do, okay, now I think is not a bad time to self-critique. Tell me if you guys self-critique. 
You should. I think it's a good thing to do, even if it feels really hard sometimes. It was a mistake, I think, for me to try to focus on the torso because now I feel really unresolved everywhere else. So what I'm going to try to do is get everything up to the same level of development. So does everybody see this hand is like blank? It's like nothing happening. I was starting to get into the stuff in here, but now I'm regretting it. And this is not happening either. So I think what I do want to do is work the rest of it and then go back into the torso because now I'm like, huh, why did I want to do that to begin with? That was really dumb. Okay. <laughs> Let's do 15 minutes, get started. And I'm just going to make my photo a little bit bigger so I can see him more because this is such a great pose. I just love this pose and I don't want to mess it up. Okay. So here we go. We're going to get in some more stuff. Sorry. I know my page is a little bit big, but what I'm going to do is try and move it around so you guys can see better. Okay. So down here, I really want to put in the ankle bone and the heel and I want to get in just the chunk and the roundness of the foot. Like I just love these feet and I need it to feel more bony and a little bit more structured because I feel like I, I sort of missed the boat on this foot and now I'm like really regretting it. There are these phalange bones that are coming up. These are really cool. I think the key is you guys, when you're drawing feet, just let them look weird. It, it's just like foreshortening, like it looks weird. Just let it look weird. Okay, here we go, like that. Okay, that feels a little bit more resolved. And this, this foot, oh. See, now I'm getting into like pick mode, which is not good. I, I don't think I wanna do that, but you know what? I just, I, I need to do it. Okay, here we go, phalanges here. And then this is hard to see again because of the, the black shapes are making it a little hard to see. Okay, let's get in here. I definitely would like to work on this hand. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I wish my laptop screen was larger. It's a little hard to see sometimes. Okay, now here I'm looking for bones, okay? I'm looking for a line of the knuckles and just like look at the fingers as like a plane, okay? Don't see fingers. Just look at the plane of that. And that is probably all you need for now. I am going to put in this one finger because this one finger, it sort of precedes the others. And so I feel like it is necessary. And then get that thumb in. Okay, maybe a little bit of the knuckles. Not a lot right now. I don't really feel like I'm ready for that just yet. So let's, uh... okay, I lied. I'm going to keep going. <laughs> I know I was like, I'm so tired. I can't do this. But now it's like the compulsive part of me can't leave this drawing. I'm like, I can't not do this. I don't know. Does anybody here tell me in the chat? Do you guys sometimes feel like being an artist? It's like, it's not even a choice. It's sort of like a compulsion. Like you have to, like you can't not do it. It's very strange. I, I don't know. Are there other professions that are like that? I suspect there must be. I just probably don't know about it. Okay. I think maybe I, I need to establish some of the values. I feel like the values are not happening right now. And this, this, this is a beautiful area. Does everybody see this muscle is coming this way. And now this one drops on top and then I got to make this darker and the genitalia disappeared. So let's bring it back like that. And I do want to put in some of the pubic hair a little bit better. Yeah, this is, oh, this is such a beautiful pose. Robert Mablethorpe, thank you. Thank you for doing groundbreaking, revolutionary, edgy photos. <laughs> it's really helping us in our live stream. Okay. You know, I'm gonna move on because even though I know this needs more work, I I don't know. I just feel like I'm getting really picky now. It's, it's not doing me a lot of good. Okay, let's work on the face a little bit more. And for that, I got to make my photo a little bit larger because I'm just finding it very hard to see on my laptop. Yeah, I feel sort of bad because in a way, the way I'm drawing, it's so not the way I normally draw. Like there, there's so many artificial things about it. Like I normally would rather draw on an easel and all that. It's just the setup is too difficult with the cameras on an easel. So yeah. 
Yeah, dude, you got a mega mustache. Look at that. Okay, let, let's at the very least, let me just give him a mouth. He definitely deserves a mouth. Don't you guys think? <laughs> I think he's earned the right to have a mouth in my drawing. And for this, I am going to slow down a little bit. So you can see my, my frantic pace that I had in the beginning. It's largely gone because I really need time to focus on what, oh man, his neck is like so smushed, crap. Okay, all right, it's all right, figure this out, all right. I think the neck is more like this. Okay, I, I'm gonna, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm just gonna trim a little bit off the shoulder. Okay, so then that brings, you know what? Wait, is the pectoralis too high? don't know I think hmm well I'm gonna change it so <laughs> too bad this is just what's happening these are the things you need to fix when you spend more time on the work let's put the okay this is the clavicle does everybody see how I'm getting the clavicle in there okay I just see I feel like I'm blending too much Kathy Collins would not be doing that okay Kathy Collins would be like that's what I need to do. But I feel like I'm not getting the control that I need. That's not happening right now. Okay. At the very least, I just got to give him these eye sockets because those are pretty dramatic. And make his nose a little bit more prominent. Okay, and then there's a lot of shadow back here that okay now i i can't not do this hand now i really do have to work on it so let's um try this so on this hand i really want to get this side shape in here okay here's the line of the knuckles and what's going on back there okay this is like some of the extensor muscles all the muscles that are in the arm and then the elbow is like a out there let's get in this cash shadow this cash shadow is very dramatic definitely cannot leave that out yeah i feel like i lost the contour okay let, let's redefine this this edge of the pelvis i think i really exact that doesn't that does not look right okay whatever it's fine <laughs> i don't care as long as you get an approximation that's what i'm looking for approximation actually this is bugging me so i'm gonna go in and just put something in here okay so now let's go back in here i think i just want to get back in the contour of his neck all right At the very least let's just yeah that's a little bit better Okay, now this hand, okay, here's another plane. So that, that's the thing about the hands, you guys. You look for planes. Don't look for fingers, look for planes. The planes are more important than anything else. And then there's a very dramatic dark shadow here. God, his mustache is like hardcore, dude. I guess they really liked their mustaches in the 70s. <laughs> Oh, I really want to like get back and look at this from a distance right now, but not going to happen. Okay. And then, oh, actually there's a shadow here too. I totally missed that shadow. Okay. Let's get that in. Okay. I, I got to go back to this hand. This hand is not good. See, now I'm having Kathy Collowitz envy because I'm like, Kathy Collowitz would have done that much better. You know what I was thinking? I, I said this to somebody, I think it was somebody in the discord. I can't remember, but somebody had posted a John Singer Sargent watercolor in one of the discord channels and i was thinking you know what i'm so glad i was not in an art class with john singer sergeant wouldn't that have sucked that would have been like the biggest blow i would have like quit being an artist right then and there that would have been like really upsetting but i think we've all been there tell me in the chat have you guys ever been in a situation where there was somebody in your art class and you just were so deathly jealous of them that you were just like roaring with jealousy <laughs> like i definitely had people like that this one girl my senior year who could freaking paint like john singer sergeant i was so jealous oh my god it was terrible it was such a blow to my ego it was really immature 
I mean, you know, <laughs> that's just what you do. Okay, well, let's see. It's so mushy. I don't like how mushy this is. You know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to just take a second and I'm going to make this window a little bit smaller. So that way you guys can see this a little bit better. I just have to find the right. Let's see if this gives you guys a little bit more room to see the image. Okay, there we go. You can see a little bit more going up that way. Okay, let's really work on this torso now because I really feel like now I'm ready to tackle your um, pectoralis. So this should be more flat. Let's give that more of a plane. Got to resurrect the nipple. The, the nipple went for a little vacation. It's coming back now. There it is. Okay. And it's really, oh, that's too round. That is bad. See, the pectoralis, it's more flat than you guys think it is. It's not as round. And I, I definitely fell into that trap just now. Okay, and I really want a good clavicle. I'll be sad if I don't have a good clavicle because this guy's got great clavicle. So I can't waste it. I have to use it as best as I can. Okay, so here, okay, this is the fun stuff. This is the stuff I just live for. <laughs> the stuff down in the middle where it's starting to get really hardcore with the forms. Nice and bulgy. So here's where the rug of tone is gonna do you guys a lot of favors because now that I have the rug of tone, it's not difficult to get in there and add some of these sections. Okay. Uh, where is, okay, so there's an overlap back here. And now I sort of lost the contour of the side. Let's bring it back. It's all about, Killing things, bringing it back, killing it, bringing it back. That, that's just what drawing is. It's okay. It's fine when that happens. Okay, here. Oh, you guys, this guy's got nice serratus muscles. Oh my God, they're so good. Okay, hang on a second. Let's get in some of this. And actually, th this, okay, hit, is that his belly button? Yeah, I think it is. I think this is um, body hair. That I'm looking at. It's, it's a little tricky because I thought it was, um, at the first I thought it was shadow, but I think this is actually just hair on his stomach like this and down. And this going up? Is that? Shoot, I think I'm getting confused. This is the external oblique. Okay, if that's the external oblique, this is the top of the external oblique, and then these are the serratus muscles. I call the serratus muscles cottage cheese. I know some people don't like cottage cheese, but I do. I like it with jam. It's really good. Okay, let's get back in. Yeah, this, okay, th this cast shadow needs work. I have to make it more dramatic. And this arm has to pop more. Got to give it more. Oh, shoot. I think I pressed too hard in that area. Oh, well, too late now. That's fine. Another part of productivity, you guys, because we were talking about this when we were looking at Keith's drawings, it's like when you start producing a lot of work, you'll start to realize that you are not as precious about it. Like if you guys only make one drawing every six months, you're going to be so precious because you're going to be like, oh my God, I spent so long. I can't do anything bad to this piece. It has to be perfect. But if you're pumping out so many drawings all the time, it's, it's actually a relief because then you don't care so much. So it's not that you don't care so much. It's, it's just, you don't fuss. Maybe that's more the way. Cause I don't want people to think that it's like, oh, you don't care. Cause you do care. Of course you care. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. A lot of other things that are a lot easier, I think, than drawing that you could spend your time doing, but that is fun. Nothing's as fun as drawing. Okay. He's starting to get some attitude. I like this guy. He's great. Okay. I do want, See, I wish I had time to really get the modeling on that shadow a little bit better. Okay, at the very least, I do like, like this like piece of flesh that's coming up. And this goes upwards. So let's, let's just make this a little bit more fleshy. Ooh, that feels good. Nice. <laughs> okay. See, th this is the part. Do, do you guys notice how the beginning is harder? 
Like, this is so much easier now that things are, I mean, probably I'm going to step away and be like, oh my God, what did I do here? But um, for now, it's feeling pretty good. So that's why I say to people that the setup part of the drawing, that's the hard part. It, it's not the details. People think it's in the details and it's not. It, it's really in the beginning when you're establishing the forms, you're trying to get the expression. That's the hard part. That's the part that is the invisible work that I think a lot of people don't realize is actually in there. Okay, I, this is so blobby. Dude, you are not that mushy. I made you way too mushy. Okay. Oh, of course I want to keep working on it, but I think I'm going to call it quits. Okay, let's take a look and see what you guys are saying. So let me switch scenes. All right, I'll take a look at the chat. And quick reminder, in case you guys were not here when I was talking about it, but remember, we also have the spring raffle. Oops, sorry, I just made myself disappear. I'm still here, don't worry about it. I just should not turn off my webcam. Okay, here we go. Wait, where did I go? There I am, sorry. <laughs> I just like clicked off all of our banners for one second. Okay, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Let's see. Marguerite says, great grandfather went to art school with Norman Rockwell. And I imagine him fuming with annoyance. You know what? If you guys are ever in Massachusetts, go to the Norman Rockwell Museum. It's one of the best museums I've ever been to. And I was floored by his paintings. Really amazing museum. Small too, so you don't get like super um, exhausted <laughs> going through it. Let's see. Maria had classes with amazing people. I knew theirs looked better, but I guess I was too focused on my own improvement to be jealous or dislike them. I only cared that I did better than my last time. Well, that sounds like the the smart, mature, focused reaction <laughs> that I probably should have had, but of course did not. I was like fuming in jealousy. <laughs> Let's see. General Grievous says, just join the stream. Wondering if you could draw Danny DeVito next. I'll tell you what, guys. In the Discord, if you guys can find a good, fairly high res image of Danny DeVito with mostly unclothed, at least, very least get his torso, okay? So we can see his torso, I'll add him to the next anatomy stream because we, we could use more different types of figures for sure. Okay, let's see what else people are saying. Cole Pepe says, tell us about your personal journey to becoming an art professor my dream to be an art professor. I'm not really sure where the journey begins. All right, that is a tale for another stream because we'll be here till 3 a.m. <laughs> if I tell you guys that story. But basically, if you wanna be an art professor, you have to get an MFA. That's the most important thing because they won't hire you without an MFA. So I would just make sure that you find a way to make that happen because they're pretty strict about that now. In the 70s, it was like nobody cared, but now people really care about those degrees. So I would just make sure and let's see, Monique is saying, when is the next stream? We stream almost every day. On the weekends, we stream at 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, weekdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And sometimes I add extra streams, but those are the basic ones. But if you guys want to see the um, page with the schedule, just go to artprof.org and click on live streams and lectures and you will find our information there. Yeah, I feel like I'm being peer pressured into drawing Danny DeVito. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, I guess I am succumbing to all of your, I don't know, pedagogical <laughs> desires. Let's see. Um, let's see. What else are people saying? Starving Artist says, in fact, that woman did all her art effortlessly. She was one of those rare people with, quote, born talent, while the rest of us were, quote, acquiring talent instead. I know, don't you hate people like that? I bet they're nice, too. You know the people I don't like? I don't like the people who are so freaking good and they're nice, so you don't have an excuse to, like, hate their guts. That's the most annoying thing, actually. But you know what? Here's the solution. This is what you guys do. If you're intensely jealous of somebody because they're so freaking good, become friends with them. That's what I did with Kathy Speranza. Does everybody see this image? This one here, that's me and Kathy. And so I interviewed her because we did this tutorial 
on her rose drawing technique. And I've been intensely jealous of her painting forever. And I still am. But now we're friends. And now I'm like, okay, I guess I took care of it. <laughs> so if you do that, that actually works a lot better. You know what, guys? I'll do a Danny DeVito anatomy stream. If you can put together the slides, if I don't have to do any work to find the images, I'll do it. Okay, that, that's how I will do it. Let's see. Yeah. Wow. People really want him. Annie says, keep watching office hours during my chemistry Zoom class. <laughs> Apparently everybody's playing Animal Crossing during Zoom. That's what I'm hearing from the students. I don't know. I mean, wh whatever floats your boat, you know? So anyway, guys, um, I hope you will go check out the Discord because there are some pretty fun conversations going on in there. And we do have a channel in Discord called Video Suggestions. So if you guys have ideas for what you'd like a, us to cover in a live drawing stream or in just a regular stream, that's fine. So let us know there. Subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Uh, Nalia saying, where can I submit images for you to draw? So what I would do, Analia, um, join the Discord. The link is in the video description below. And you can just pop some images into video suggestions and I'll take a look at it there. So that would be really, really fun. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for joining me for all of your wonderful suggestions and comments. Everybody stay safe. I'll see you.